Now we're not going to go to this enchanting table. I've actually made another one. And that's the last thing that I want to show off on today's tour. So we're going to head over there. Uh, you guys might have seen this before. Um, this is a giant kind of gate. Well, it, it's not a kind of gate. It is a gate. And it is styled after this gate. And I'm going to repeat this because I really like the way that it looks. So there's a few places on the map here where you're going to see me kind of just build this big wooden fence gate into stone. And then these will be the little doorways to get through. And then there's kind of just like a lot of little details in the tunnel here. Um, for instance, I have the little hidden lighting. And on the floor, I've got like X patterns and diamond patterns, and they just kind of alternate. So lots of little cool things like that. Again, mobs can spawn in here, but I've actually found it to be a lot of fun to kill them when I come through. Um, you know, it, it just kind of adds something to the game. I feel like if mobs can spawn here or there... You know, having too many torches, it, it really just takes the fun out of it. I know the zombies are crazy these days, man, but you, you gotta have fun. But anyways, I mean, what am I doing sitting here talking about zombies? This is the other thing that I built, and this is a huge building. So this is the last stop on our tour, guys. Um, anybody with a really good memory, or who watched my last couple episodes, um, you'll see that there was a skeleton spawner here. And uh, my thoughts at first were that, you know, I was just going to build a really simple little cobblestone basic, like, spawner, and that was going to be cool, and, you know, and then I got to think about it. No, I got to be more creative than that. So I built, essentially, what is a really cool but incredibly useless um, spawner. <laughs> it's really inefficient. Um, if I AFK for like an hour, maybe then I'll get about 30 levels. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not like really terrific. But this is a roof. Uh, the roof does have glass blocks that let sunlight all the way down to the bottom. I wanted that so that mobs would burn if they escaped the spawner. Um, and then hanging above it is like this giant mountain cliff thing. So I think we're actually going to build up there too, but we'll, we'll get to that in a future episode. So we'll put the hurt in. We'll use up some durability on this poor brand new diamond axe. It's okay, it's the only time we'll be using it now. Until we enchant it, of course. Um, so that's kind of the balcony. That's just for views at the top of the building. The main floor here holds some of the machinery. And by machinery, I just means... Uh, or I just mean, sorry. <laughs> I just means, I'm some Italian guy. I means this is the machinery. This makes the meatballs. Uh... <laughs> Sure, somebody will have something to say about that anyways um yeah so this is a bunch of like water streams and i will attempt to elaborate here as you can see down there it's a water elevator and essentially long story short there's three of them there's one two and three over there and they all join and this is like the overflow storage if that makes sense so what happens is the skeletons come up either on side one, two, or three, and they get stuck up here at the top. And what keeps them up here at the top is this piston. And when this piston is extended, like it is right now, um, their heads get in the way, and they cannot drop down there. And obviously, when I retract the piston, you know, I've got like 30 or something skeletons uh, stored up here, and they all just kind of boom, knock each other down, and they all fall down to like a one hit kill on their own. So we're actually gonna take a little bit of fall damage and pop down here. Um, this is just the wiring that goes down and this wiring essentially holds the same hitbox as their drop shoot. Um, because the space is only every other block, the skeletons can't actually fall out as they fall down. And um, I'm, I'm never really in a position where the skeletons are going to shoot me from there. I mean, on a really rare occasion, a skeleton can actually get off a hit if you've already aggroed it. Um, but that's usually not the case, so I usually don't worry about it. Uh, this is this is kind of the, the work room, if that makes sense. Uh, I guess I'll just kind of show this real quick. This goes out to a cave, just in case you guys are wondering what the door went. Um, but uh, in here is storage, and I've got this organized into enchanted bows and enchanted armor. All these come off of the skeletons 
Um, over here is where I would take these broken pieces of enchanted armor and I would... Um, is there a button? There is a button there, good. Uh, I thought it disappeared. I was like, holy crap, where's the button? Um, you would take all of these uh, pieces of enchanted armor and whatever and you would fix them, in theory, by putting you know one or two of them in the anvil. And when this anvil breaks, um, other anvils will fall down and into its place. Now, I don't have any more anvils crafted because I'm actually really low on iron right now. Um, this is the quick pulse redstone circuitry that actually fires um, the, the button. Because just so you guys know, the pulse of a button actually sends out a redstone pulse that is too slow uh, to make that mechanism work. So just so you guys know, if you're trying to set up a button that, you know, quickly retracts a, um, a piston to, you know, only let like only one anvil fall down into its place, uh, you guys are going to want to look up a how to build a compact, um, like, red pulse shortener and shorten it down to just, like, one tick. So do a quick search on the YouTubes on that, and uh, you guys will be fine. And the tutorial can probably explain it much better than I can. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so we're going to use the enchanting table. And um, just so you guys know, I added a little bit of functionality to this. Um, when I'm not using the enchanting table, it kind of slides off and, you know, looks a little bit more clean and crisp. And there you go. Now it pops in again. It also clears off some of the torches. Um... I've been thinking about redoing this so that pistons come up from these blocks as well. Um, that would knock off all the torches. So that way when I want a really low level enchant, you know, I can just, you know, hit a button and it'll wipe the slate and be like, pop. And then I click on it again and now it's all clear. So these are the only four spaces where they would still stay. So I'm thinking that's a good addition for the future. Uh... The wiring for that is right like here there we go um, so as you can see well as you can see now um, that pressure plate up there is going to be powering and or not powering this redstone ovaire right here what this does is it shuffles back and forth into an on-off position this uh, this quartz block which is on top of a redstone torch when it's in the uh, look facing it right now when it's in the left hand position it's going to send out power when it's in the right hand position it's not going to send out power um, I guess the best way to explain this would be kind of like a T flip flop sort of mechanism uh, maybe that's not the best word for it but I guess that's how I think of it again uh, I don't really do redstone tutorials very well uh, so, if you guys are interested in anything like that, I would encourage you to, again, um, do a quick search for it. You guys will find it. The community is always very helpful. So, anyways, long story short, um, I've just got this wired up so it sends power to all the pistons necessary to move those blocks. And that does the trick for me. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and enchant, um, our enchant, or chant our, uh, diamond pick here. And, uh, hopefully this will... Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, that's great. I wonder if Fortune works on cutting down wood. We're going to go actually test that before this episode's done. I'll just clean that up. Um, that's really great. Did I say diamond pick before I meant, I meant diamond axe? You guys knew what I meant. Um, okay, so we just have one last thing to show down here before we are done. This is... Um, let's just make sure we're on hard so something definitely spawns. Yeah, we're on hard. Good. Um, so if you guys will be patient for just a moment, um, eventually in one of these three dark rooms, either one, two, or three, a skeleton will spawn. Oh, there we go. Hey, what's up? Um, and so what he did, and I'll knock this out here real quick. What this skeleton did was he spawned in this space. And when he did, he spawned on that pressure plate. When he spawned on that pressure plate, it released a piston in the back here, which allowed water to flow into his headspace. That then allowed the skeleton to start floating up to the top, where he would essentially become 
uh, experience points for me. Uh, yeah, so that's how that works. And, you know, when they step on the pressure plate, it also just kind of powers the, the redstone lamp in front of them and, you know, let you know, like, skeleton here, experience on the way. So, fun stuff, fun stuff. I think I had a half stone. Yep, I did have a... Uh, so this is actually a pretty good way to explain this. Um, I'm about to put a, a half slab on top of... That's the spawner, by the way. Hi, spawner. Uh, on, to, uh, on the bottom of this. Uh, so you'll notice over here, this spawning chamber is dark on the inside. And it's dark because light can't pass through these block gaps because they're not full block gaps. So that's what allows the skeletons to spawn even though the room is lit up. Hey, buddy. Um, and when I put on this block, yeah, it's not, um, it's not lit up anymore. So. There you go. Fun stuff. Learn something new every day. Um, yeah, so there should be some skeletons up there now. So what I can do is, from down here, I can control the piston and just let them loose. And they'll fall down. And I can take my fist and I can punch them to death. And some of these guys got an armor. So they're a little bit harder to kill. What are you going to do, though? And uh, their items, when they die, go into this item hopper. And the item hopper runs below and I'll show you guys that wiring room in just a moment um, essentially this is the spawner again um, the hopper train comes down this way and runs into an item elevator there's a really simple tutorials for this online um, and it powers these upward facing droppers up into the chest like so and what that does is it keeps me from shiny new axe wow. um, it keeps me from having to worry about the drops for the mobs so essentially when I'm downstairs in the little like AFK room I just get the experience which is what I come here for um, I don't have to worry about all this crap I can sort it out at my leisure um, and so it just kind of hoppers them up here and I get to sort out later on the bones and you know the bows and little things like that so that's it for the overworld, at least. I have definitely... Oh, oh holy moly. <laughs> I've definitely built a decent amount in the nether as well. But that's going to be for next episode. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick nap. And before we go, I want to test out this looting on the axe. Because I've never had looting... No, fortune. It's not looting. It's fortune. So it doesn't work on mobs. It wouldn't work on mobs. So what do you break with an axe that would drop more of an item? I do want to sleep. I'm wondering if it is trees. That would be really cool. Because I am about to decimate the forest. And these chunks don't want to reload. So... And that just take a snapshot. That's not what I wanted it to do. <laughs> Try it again. There you go. So hopefully some of these trees will be loaded when I get around the corner here. There we go. So let's go ahead and let's break. We have one stack of oak on us exactly. So that just drops one. One just drops one. Just drops one just drops one huh that's really weird maybe it like only works on pumpkins and melons and things like that that would be really lame because I think that this is a pretty awesome awesome enchantment having fortune on there that's great anyways that's like probably the best axe we could have got guys thank you very much uh, for watching I'm going to level this forest and then we're gonna see you guys in the nether in the next episode and you guys can see some of the awesome terraforming i've been doing in there i think you'll like it, it looks pretty good so uh yeah thanks guys remember if you got any comments leave them below uh if you want to help me out go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and leave me a like i will catch you all in the future